I'm Jessica Huey, founder of JH Public Relations, here at the Ivy Club for the Kruger Town Breakfast Briefing, speaking to award-winning broadcast journalist Raggy Omar and Peace One Day founder Jeremy Gilly. It's kind of interesting because I could hear the cynic at that point saying, yeah, okay, great, so we've created this day of peace, but it's never really going to work. Nobody's going to stop fighting. I then decided to make a second film with the BBC and kind of go, okay, well, let's try and prove the cynic wrong. And the one place that everyone said it was impossible was Afghanistan, and that you could never get the Taliban to become involved in this day. We went to Afghanistan, and after a couple of years of work, the Mujahideen said, okay, well, we won't kill or kidnap anybody on that day. And as a consequence of that, we were able to take 10,000 vaccinators into areas that you couldn't normally go for fear of being kidnapped or killed, and 1.4 million children were vaccinated against polio as a consequence of a successful ceasefire, which NATO and ISAF and the Taliban and everybody else was involved in. You famously secured $10 million of investment from the Buffett family, but how do you secure investment in the intangible concept as well, peace? I had done a Coca-Cola commercial. I mean, we work a lot with Coke, so Coke have been raising awareness of the work that we've been doing all over the world. Howard Buffett sits on the board of Coca-Cola. There's a large shareholder of Coca-Cola. And, and he asked if he could sit down and talk. Actually, you know, when I met him, I thought that maybe, maybe I'd done something wrong. Um, because he said, look, we've done a lot of research on the organization and uh, you know, we're fascinated by the results. Obviously, he knew that we had created the Debt of Peace. Uh, he, he'd seen that what we'd done in Afghanistan had worked. And he asked me if we could do similar work in the Great Lakes region of Africa, particularly in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So could I raise awareness of the day, manifest action on the day, make films about that process in the, in the Great Lakes region, as well as hold concerts. So doing a really a, sort of an amazing piece of peace advocacy within that region, because it's very rare that positive, constructive stories are told to the world from that area of the world. But, and, you know, obviously that was a massive honour to have the opportunity to do that. And I jumped at the chance. Um, he told me, he asked me how long it would take and, and how much money it would cost. And, and that's what led, led to him giving us $10 million, which has completely changed the organisation. We know that partnerships are the way to grow any business, but what's been the most important partnership which has really impacted for Peace One Day? So the corporate partnership that's had the most impact for us is obviously with Coca-Cola. Um, Coca-Cola were there for us right at the beginning in many ways. Um, same as British Airways, but you know, Coke you know, put a lot of money in. Um, you know, they put the Peace message, our logo, on their bottles, on their cans. That was an extraordinary commitment. Kind of first time they've made a kind of real commitment to the peace process on, on the actual can itself. And so the Coca-Cola relationship has been absolutely incredible. And it was an absolute total lifeline to us. Similarly, the relationship with British Airways. From the beginning, I needed to fly around the world in order to meet the Dalai Lama or Kofi Annan or Mary Robinson or whoever it might have been. And the only way to get there was on a plane and I'm delighted that British Airways for the last 16 years have flown me free of charge and my team to any destination that we've needed to get to. That was everything. That was the, that actually was the door opener to making the world a very small place. In some senses, the one thing that hasn't changed about uh, uh, journalism is um, the fact that the, the passion that one has in trying to sort of um, want to go to the Gazas or the Congos of, of this world is the need and the want to tell stories. People always say, what's the best story you've always done? Um, um, there isn't one because in some senses, the next story is the one that you are most passionate uh, uh, about and in terms of uh, I'm, I'm trying to tell. You've been in the public eye for 15 years as a journalist. How important has resilience been in your career? I think resilience is one of the key things, actually, um, that enabled me to navigate my way through this career and, and life. I mean, people often sort of forget that you know it's not just you know you standing in front of a camera, often in sort of you know dangerous or you know hostile or difficult situations. I've got a family to come back to, their children at home, their relatives, and it's much, much harder actually for them. Because um, you know, I might be on the end of a phone in a city where they switch on the TV and they see bombs raining down, they'll be absolutely terrified. I might call them and say, look, don't worry, actually the bombing was a bit further away, I'm in a secure sort of hotel. But they can't see that, they can't be with me to sort of appreciate that. So I think resilience, not just for myself actually, is uh, resilience just for um, colleagues, 
loved ones and your editors who send you there who are you know, afraid you know, every night they're going to get a phone call saying, look, there's been a problem, the crew's been kidnapped or whatever. whatever. So resilience is incredibly important. And, um, and I think mostly, not just the kind of physical resilience, it's an emotional resilience. Finally, what's your vision for you? What does the future hold and what's next? What does the future hold for me? Um, I think uh, I still want to tell stories about um, Britain and its role in the changing world. Um, and uh, I also want to just um, keep enjoying what I do. I, I've spoken to sort of some schools and I sort of say, you just whatever, whatever life choice you make, make sure that you love getting up in the morning and going to do what you do. And I think uh, 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 not only a passion, but a determination uh, and, and the love. Um, and I think also the other thing is, I think one of the qualities that people often leave out in, in many different walks of life is joy. It should, be, it should be working, it should be a joyful uh, um, process. Um, so what next for me? I don't, journalists are really bad at planning. Um, and uh, I could sort of write on the back of an envelope now what the next stories I'd love to do is, by the time I get in the tube and get out the other end at work, it all would have changed. So there's always a new day and a new story to tell.